Has anyone ever said to you, prayer is like talking to God as a friend, and sometimes they might have said it quite glibly. Is it really? When you talk to a friend, you see them. When you talk to a friend, they talk back. But when you kneel in prayer, you don't see God, and most of the time don't hear an audible voice from God. How can prayer be like talking to God as a friend? The Bible presents some dynamic principles for an effective prayer life. A father was trying to teach his young daughter to pray. He understood the value and the importance of prayer in the Christian life. And so as he was teaching her to pray, they knelt down by her bed one night and she began to pray and she prayed a simple little prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I would like a pink elephant. And Jesus, please send that pink elephant tonight so that when I wake up in the morning, I see the pink elephant in my backyard. At the end of the prayer, the father said to the little girl, but honey, who's going to take care of the pink elephant? Oh, you are, daddy. You know, pink elephants make quite a mess. Who's going to clean up after the pink elephant? Oh, you are, daddy. And who's going to feed the pink elephant? Daddy, wouldn't you do that for me? Now, here's my question. Do you think that God sent her a pink elephant that night? What do you think? Did he do that? You see, is prayer a method from getting from God what we really want? There are many people who have a concept of prayer that is very childlike. They say prayer is getting from God whatever we desire. If that were true, prayer would be a method of increasing our selfishness, wouldn't it? What is prayer? And how can you have this intimate relationship with God in prayer? The disciples came to Jesus one day, and you find it in Luke, the 11th chapter. And here in the Gospel of Luke, the disciples came to Jesus, and they asked him a question about the prayer life. You find it in Luke, chapter 11, and verse 1. It says, and it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place. When he ceased, then one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. The disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. When the disciples listened to Christ's prayers, they sensed that Jesus was really praying. They sensed that Jesus had really connected with the Father. They sensed that Jesus had an intimate relationship with the Father. So these disciples longed for that same relationship. They sensed that Jesus wasn't praying from rote. He wasn't praying merely from some automatic ritual. But Jesus was connecting. Jesus was communicating. Jesus was talking to the Father as a friend. And so the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. So prayer is something you can learn. You can learn to pray effectively. One of the classic studies done on intercessory prayer was done by Dr. Randolph Byrd, a cardiologist in San Francisco. He took a group of patients, 293 patients, and divided them into two groups. One group were not prayed for. They were a group that were given medication. These patients had all been through coronary bypass surgery. And Dr. Byrd wanted to find out if it was any if there was any difference in praying for one of these groups and to see if they recovered from their coronary bypass surgery any more quickly if they were prayed for. And so he gave out the names of half of these coronary bypass surgery patients to Christians throughout San Francisco. And he encouraged groups of Christians to begin to pray for these coronary bypass patients. Something remarkable happened they had less pain after surgery. They needed less medication to improve after surgery. Their complications were far less. Dr. Bird wrote later, and this story was picked up in national newspapers and by the media throughout the United States. Dr. Bird wrote, if this were some medical study, it would have been listed as a modern medical breakthrough. But it is, my friend, a Bible breakthrough.